Augmentation Evoker. It's WoW's first support class, and it utilizes the power of the black and bronze dragon flights, weaving in magic to alleviate our allies and do damage to our enemies. So how are we going to play it? Well, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know in a beginner-friendly manner, while also giving veterans watching everything they need to know too. Let's start off with our stat priority. So the primary stat we want on our gear is going to be intellect, and this is going to increase the damage and healing of our spells. As long as you're getting a higher and higher eye level of gear, you don't need to worry too much about the secondary stats. Getting a higher eye level is 99% of the time going to be an upgrade for you. Speaking of the secondary stats, though, the secondary priority you want to follow loosely is here. Mastery is unique to every single spec, but as it's called Time Walker, casting an Empower spell, which I'll go over shortly in the rotation, grants shifting sands to one ally, preferring damage dealers, increasing their versatility. What does versatility do? Well, that's going to increase damage and healing done while also reducing damage taken. So with our mastery, when we use certain spells, which I will be showing you, we can actually increase our allies' versatility. And we can actually increase it by a higher amount for the more mastery we have. The duration of shifting sands, breath of Eons, and your other helpful auras are also increased by a higher percentage for the more mastery we have. So TLDR then, the more mastery we have, the more we're going to be able to help our allies out and increase their stats, etc. Critical Strike increases the chance to do double damage and healing. Haste increases our attack speed and spell casting speed. Let's say if I use Living Flame here, you can see it's casting on 1.9 seconds. More haste will shorten that cast time, and any dots or damage over time effects on our enemies will tick over, doing damage even quicker. Looking then at the set bonus that we're getting in Season 1, Upheaval deals more damage and increases the damage of your next two eruption casts, and Ebon Might increases primary stats by an additional amount of your own every two seconds it remains active. Again, if you don't know what these are, don't worry, I'll be going through it all in a lot of detail for you shortly. So now we're going to be looking at some of the utilities and cooldowns and defensives that we have available to us as an evoker in the War Within. So on the left here, this action bar, these are abilities that we're using to debilitate our enemies. And on the right, these ones are actually there to enhance us and our allies. So let's start off with what we're doing to our enemies then. Well, first up, we've got Sleepwalk. You can see how I'm casting this. Disorienting an enemy for 20 seconds, causing them to sleepwalk around you. And damage has a chance, so it's not a guarantee, to also awake them. Then we have Landslide. You can see I can point this wherever I want, making a landslide, conjuring a path of shifting stone towards the target location. Rooting enemies for 15 seconds that are caught with it, but damage, again, may cancel the root. Then we have Oppressing Roar. Any enemies caught in the cone that is emitted from this Oppressing Roar will actually have the duration of any crowd control placed upon them increased by 50%. So if you root them for 10 seconds and then use that, they're then going to be rooted for another 5 seconds, therefore 15 seconds, for example. And it will be for any um, crowd control applied to them in the next 10 seconds when you use a pressing roar. And lastly, we have Quell. This is your interrupt, otherwise known as a kick. And this is what we use to interrupt our enemies' spellcasting. It is extremely important to use this, and beginners and veterans alike often do overlook the importance of interrupting the enemies' spellcasting, whether that be in raiding, PvP, or Mythic Plus. Moving over then to the um, defensives and, and utilities we have to help us and our allies, we have Obsidian Scales. And you can see here I've got two charges of this at the moment. Reinforce your scales, reducing damage taken by 30% for 12 seconds. That's just a core defensive that we have. We then have a Blessing of the Bronze. You should put this on before combat. It can be placed on you, your party, and your raid. And by that, I do mean that if you place it on yourself or just press the button, when you're in a party or a raid, it will also apply to everybody in that group. And what this does is it reduces the cooldown of any major movement abilities that your allies and you have by 15% for an entire hour. We then have another huge one, Fury of the Aspects. This is your bloodlust or heroism. Basically, 
This is going to increase the haste of all party and raid members by 30% for 40 seconds and is generally considered the biggest cooldown in the game. Other classes also have it. And you can see I now have the exhaustion debuff. Now, if a mage uses, the, uses their version or a shaman uses their version, it does then mean that everyone has the debuff and you can't then use yours. It is shared between the entire raid group. We have rescue, which I kind of can show you, but not really. Um, you swoop to an ally and fly with them to a target location. So I can say this is where I want to fly to, and I click my ally or their um, raid frame, and I will rescue them to that location, taking them out of wherever, you know, whatever they're in. And lastly, we have Cauterizing Flame. This is one of the best debuff removers in the game. You're going to cauterize the ally's wounds, removing any bleed, poison, curse, and disease effects, and healing them if it removes any effect. A lot of classes can remove like magic and disease, etc., but only very few can actually remove bleed effects. And this is why the Evoker is so amazing with their Cauterizing Flame. Now, you can choose other talents in your Evoker tree, and there are other bits and bobs in the Evoker spellbook, like Expunge, um, or I don't know, there's a few others <laughs> that you can look through. But I don't want to overwhelm you in this video. And these are the main ones that I think you really need to be aware of if you weren't already. Now for the fun part, which of course is the rotation. This is quite interesting as an augmentation evoker. And actually, for Mythic Plus and raiding, we can go with the same rotation, which is very, very unique and doesn't happen very often. It's only happened in one other spec that I filmed for the War Within launch. And both of these, of course, are going to be going with Chrono Warden. This here is the raid build. And then this here is the Mythic Plus build. As you can see, it's very very different. Main thing that we're changing in the Mythic Plus build is Cauterizing Flame, where you can cauterize an ally's wounds, removing bleed, poison, and curse, and disease effects, and do a little bit of healing, which often is very useful in Mythic Plus, but not as often in raiding. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is maintain prescience on our DPS players. Grant an ally the gift of foresight, increasing their critical strike chance by 3%, and occasionally copying their damage healing spells at 15% power for 20 seconds. This affects the nearest ally within 25 yards, preferring damage dealers if you do not have an ally targeted. So you can target an ally and use it on whoever you want, using raid frames, etc. Otherwise, it'll just choose the closest. And you want to maintain this on your pretty best uh, DPS players. And then we have Blistering Scales, as you can see here. You're going to maintain this one on the tank. Protects an ally with 20 Explosive Dragon Scales, increasing their armor by 30% of your own armor. Melee attacks against the target cause the scale to explode, dealing damage, and that will actually do damage to enemies near them as well. This damage can only occur every few seconds, and it can only be placed on one target at a time, hence why we're using it on the tank, because that's who they're attacking, and it just makes sense. Then we have Ebon Might. You're going to be using this about every 30 seconds. Increase your four nearest allies' primary stat by 5% of your own, and causes you to deal more damage. It may only affect four allies at once, and prefers to imbue damage dealers. Eruption, Breath of Eons, and your Empower spells extend the duration of of this effect. Then we have Breath of Eons. Going to be using this about every two minutes. Fly to the targeted location. Let's say it's uh, here. Exposing temporal wounds on enemies in your path. And you can see that on this target dummy here. Temporal wounds accumulate 10% of damage dealt by your allies affected by Ebon Might, which is the one we just used. Then they critically strike for that amount as arcane damage. And, and it also applies Ebon Might for five seconds as well. It removes all brute effects and your immune to movement impairment effects while you are flying as well. After you land on Breath of Eons, you immediately want to use your tip the scales. It's off the global cooldown, so literally the split second you land, you can use this. Compress time to make your next empowered spell cast instantly and at maximum empower. What the hell does that mean? So we have Fire Breath, and that is the next priority. Inhale, stoking your inner flame, and then release exhaling, burning enemies in a cone in front of you. It increases the duration of your axe and active Ebon Might effects by two seconds as well. So one of the main things we are trying to do is use our Ebon Might, but then also extend it with multiple different things, Fire Breath being one of them. 
And you can see, if we use it at rank 1, it deals damage instantly in over 24 seconds, and then more and more over um, less seconds if we use it at 2 or 3. Now you can see here, it's going to be instant when I use it. That's because I tip the scales. Whereas, if I actually hold it down, then we can actually empower it at different levels. If you're using it with tip the scales, which you should, then you're at rank 1. If it's... Sorry... If you're doing it with tip the scales, it will automatically do it at the maximum rank. Otherwise, use it at rank 1. So just not a rank 2 like that, but at rank 1. So you're going to click it again and release it at rank 1. You can also see here we have something called Essence here under our user frame. Used by evokers to power certain abilities. One Essence recharges at a time. And that's going to be for our eruption spell. That's the main way that we're going to be using our Essence. But first, we have Upheaval. We're going to use that again at rank 1, unless we really need the added radius. Gather urban power beneath your enemy's feet and send them hurtling towards uh, upwards, sorry, dealing volcanic damage. And it's not going to do any more damage per empower, it's just going to do a bigger radius. So again, only use it at more empower if you need the radius. Then we have our eruption, the main way we're spending our essence. You can see there it was sometimes proc and you can get a free one. Otherwise, it will cost two essence. Cause a violent eruption beneath your enemy's feet, dealing volcanic damage, split between them and nearby enemies, and it increases again the effects of your ebon might for a second. Lastly, we have Chrono Flames, usually known as Living Flame, but because we're a Chrono Warden, it is now called Chrono Flames, and I will be explaining that fully with the hero talents we'll be going through shortly. Twist Chrono Flames towards a target, dealing fire damage to an enemy or healing an ally. Bronze Magic repeats some of that damage or healing you dealt to the target. Um, basically, just use this as a filler. Nothing much to say there. And then finally, if you need movement, you can use Azure Strike because it's instant and therefore you can use it when on the move where you can project uh, intense energy onto free enemies dealing damage. It really is quite a simple rotation that we're following this season as an augmentation evoker in the War Within. This is the free eruption I was speaking about, Essence Burst and Essence Attunement. Your Living Flame, also now, now, now known as Chrono Flame, has a 20% chance, and your Azure Strike, which is the one I just showed you with the movement, has a 15% chance to make your next eruption cost no Essence at all, and that can stack twice. And then uh, here, Essence Attunement, Essence Burst can stack two times, for example. We have the Defy Fate talent, which is really interesting. Fatal attacks are diverted into a nearby timeline, preventing the damage and your death in this one. The release of temporal energies restores health to you and nearby allies. So it's basically a get out of jail free card, but it can only happen every six minutes. When you're flying with Breath of Eons, your damage that you're taking is instead staggered for a few seconds. And when you consume Essence Burst, which again is this one here of your free eruptions, we actually do have Momentum Shift where it grants you more intellect and that can stack as well. doesn't really affect anything, but it's just important to know. Prescience also has a chance to give Essence Burst as well. Um... And then we have Inferno's Blessing. This is just enhancing you and your allies again. Fire Breath grants you Inferno's Blessing to you and your allies affected by Ebon Might. Again, we're always trying to extend Ebon Might and keep it up, giving the damaging attacks and spells a high chance to deal more fire damage. And those really are the main talents that I think you should be aware of. And again, we can use the... Uh, same rotation for both Mythic Plus Dungeons and also Raiding. And now on to the Hero Talents, of course, as a Chrono Warden. So for this build, we are taking the Chrono Warden Hero Talents. This is quite an interesting one. You know, we are Augmentation of Ochres, and this is all about the Bronze Dragon Flight. So first up, Living Flame is enhanced with Bronze Magic. How fabulous. Repeating 25% of the damage or healing you deal to the target in the last five seconds as Arcane, just passively adding more damage and healing um, where we're already doing it. Going down the left side first, Hover, so some utility here. Hover now causes you to briefly warp out of existence and appear at your destination, and Hover's cooldown is replaced, makes Hover quicker, in my opinion. Then we've got our first um, choice node. Warp reduces damage taken, which I love. Or warp leaves a trail of motes of acceleration. Allies who come into it gain 20% increased movement speed for 30 seconds. If it is a fight where you and your allies need movement speed, 
then go for modes of acceleration. If um, you don't really need that, and it's like just a rare occurrence that you're having to warp to somewhere else with hover, then and you need some defensives, just go for temporality. It really is a niche choice here. Another one, double time, Ebon Might and pres Prescience. Gain a chance equal to a critical strike chance to gain 50% additional stats, which is massive. Time convergence, non-defensive abilities of a 45-second cooldown, grant 5% intellect. I really like double time because it's giving basically everyone a benefit, not just yourself, and 50% additional stats is kind of crazy. I do think that is going to be better than time convergence. Um... Going down the middle, Temporal Burst. Tip the scales, overload you with Temporal Energy, increasing your haste, movement speed, and cooldown recovery, which is just passively really lovely. Threads of Fate. Casting an Empower spell during Temporal Burst causes a nearby ally to gain a Thread of Fate for 10 seconds. What that Thread of Fate is going to do is it's going to grant them a chance to echo their damage or healing. Again, just passively enhancing our allies. And if this is all sounding quite overwhelming and you are a beginner, don't worry. Like A lot of this is happening all passively into the rotation that I've shown you anyway. I just want to kind of go through what's actually going on behind the scenes a little bit with the new hero talents. Casting essence spells extends your active threads of fate, or each time you cast one, unstable magic reduces its cooldown. I quite like instability matrix here. Um, upheaval deals more damage. Primacy for each damage over time effect from upheaval, you gain some haste, which is nice. Prescience has a 20% chance to cause your next prescience to last longer. Again, really nice for prescience up uptime, which is fantastic for us. And lastly, empower spells send up the free chrono flames to your target, which is this one that we first spoke about, where the living flame is going to help do damage and healing to our allies. So when you use empower, any empower spells, your allies are going to get some of those um, chrono flames happening passively. And that is the chrono warden talent. It's not doing anything crazy. It's just passively enhancing the damage and healing we're doing and to our allies. And I really think it's quite nice. Finally, looking at the consumables we're going to be using, you will notice these Nerubian gem weavers. First off, looking at enchants and um, what we're adding to our gear. So these are the new weekly vault um, items where you can add a socket to your gear on the head wrist and waist and you'll also see magnificent jewelers settings you can add two to your neck and each ring and this is adding two sockets to each piece of jewelry chant of winged grace on the back is going to be an avoidance and lessening of full damage uh, enchant crystalline radiance will be primary stat avoidance on the wrist Sunset Spell Fred gives primary stat and also stamina on the legs. Scout's March is the uh, movement speed on the boots that you'd come to expect. Putting Mastery on the rings, uh, you can put uh, you know haste or crit depending on your exact circumstances with your secondary stats and stat priority, um, especially if you're simulating your character. But generally, you know Mastery etc. is going to be fine. And then the Authority of Radiant Power is going to be on your weapon enchant. Basically, sometimes when you're doing damage, you will do an extra amount of radiant damage on your target and also increase your secondary stat by about 1700 uh, for I don't know how long. <laughs> it just says temporarily on the tooltip of the enchant. Um, but there we go. So sorry about that. I haven't got a bloody clue. And then on the uh, consumables, I would just go for the tempered versatility personally over the mastery flask. It's just a more general increase on both damage and defensives. Feasts, obviously, are the best option. And then tempered potion will increase your secondary stats. Specifically, it's going to increase the one that doesn't, um, isn't being used on your flask. Healing potion is your healing potion. Mana oil can add crit and haste. Um, I would go with the Algari Mana Oil. That's what adds crit and haste. Crystallized Augment Rune increases primary stats. And then the gems are a bit interesting. Culminating Blasphemite. It actually adds primary stat, but it also will add a little bit of critical effect per different colored gem you're using. So if you use like here an Onyx, a Ruby, an Emerald, and a Sapphire, you'll get 0.60% critical effect whereas if you only use one color you'll only get 15 so you do want to use all four colors and then after that which use whichever colors you would like depending on your stat priority thank you so much for watching this guide i hope it was really useful for you in the war within season one whether it was for mythic plus or raiding 
If you do have any questions, I'll be happy to help. My Patreon is in the description below, and that is where you can find my LVI profiles, which I'll show you in a second. And also, I'm putting together a huge macro list for every single spec that's going to be really useful for you in The War Within as well well i am doing all classes and specs for the war within so if you are new to the channel then please do click this playlist here to check out what else i have which is all of them <laughs> there will also be pvp guides on this channel as well for war within season one so make sure to look out for that this here is the ui that i was referring to as you can see we've got um target frames, etc., um, left and right, and raid frames go in the middle here, and then we call us in the middle with an action bar down here. Chat is behind where my camera is, minimap and details, etc., are here um, on the right. All of the plater profiles, the voodoo, the LVI, etc., details profile has all been made by me, and again, you can get this on my Patreon should you uh, like it.